We know that God is with us even in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance, endurance produces character, character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The Old Testament today comes from Psalm chapter 95, verses 1 through 7. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which is his hands have formed. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would listen to his voice.
blessing of God's word is before us. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to his grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering uh, produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. Much more uh, surely than now, much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if we were enemies, uh, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, will we be saved uh, by his life. But more than that, even, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now uh, received reconciliation. Here ends uh, the word of the Lord, which comes to us from Paul's letter to the church at Rome, uh, at Rome and it is the word of the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise. We offer our hearts to you so that your grace might be a rich blessing among us. We ask, Lord, that you would give us a vision of the message you have in store, that you would grant us wisdom that uh, the author Paul and the, the glory of God envisions us to see today. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. On this third Sunday during the season of Lent, I believe that it is our call to zero in on the cross and the sacrifice that Jesus made for each and every one of us. And I believe there is an important distinction to be made here with regard to the way that we look at the cross of Jesus. Often we talk about and think about the cross as a general symbol of our faith. We talk about it in general terms. We think about the sacrifice of Jesus by saying, Jesus paid it all. He paid the price for all of us. And that is completely true, to be sure. However, when we speak about, and when we think in such general terms that Jesus paid it all for all of us, that sort of sometimes gives us permission to be a face in the crowd rather than claiming our own personal identity as the one whose redemption was purchased by the sacrifice of our brother, Jesus Christ the Lord. That our brother personally made that sacrifice for each one of us. So, in that way, I want us to zero in on the cross <clears throat> and the sacrifice that Jesus made we must never forget that on the cross, Jesus died for each one of us personally. We all are set free by the blood of the Lamb. That is true. But 
it is much more importantly true that I am set free because Jesus loves me so much. You and each one of you, personally and individually, are citizens of God's kingdom and can feel a kinship with God, the Father, because Jesus was led to the cross, willingly went to the cross and suffered unthinkable agony because such an amazing love was in Jesus' heart. And because that's true, you and I can grow to understand the peace and what the peace of the Lord is all about. It is all about the love of Jesus and the glory of his sacrifice and the eternity of God's kingdom that the blood of Jesus' sacrifice reveals and brings close to you and me personally. So that's the nature of the freedom, the grace, and the peace that Paul is talking about in this passage in the fifth chapter of Romans. It all comes from the cross. It all comes from the cross, the sacrifice that Jesus made. Jesus loved as he suffered and died there at Calvary. Connects it all together. So embracing Jesus' love is where it all starts. Zeroing in on what Jesus' sacrifice means for you and for me personally is what it means when Paul says that we are justified by faith. The fullness of God's presence is opened up to us when we, individually, make the decision that we're going to pick up the cross and follow Jesus to the exclusion of all the other voices that we hear. Jesus' sacrifice identifies you and me personally as disciples in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises another counselor in the Gospel of John, the Holy Spirit, the foundation of the faith that we are justified, according to this passage, starts, though, and ends. In other words, the door is open to the fullness of God by the sacrifice that Jesus made for you and me. Well, Really, it starts not on a hill far away, but in the heart of Jesus, his love for us. We cannot be real disciples of Jesus Christ. We cannot zero in on the meaning of the cross of Jesus without this vision of the completeness of God. If we only embrace God the Father, Almighty and powerful, then God is on the throne, exalted, yet sort of unpro unapproachable. God is sort of far away and above where we can attain his presence. If we only embrace Jesus, then we only have images of God that are constrained by the culture and in the generation of his humanity. If our image is limited to the Spirit's blessing around us, then our experience of God is separate from the power and the redemption that comes from God the Father and God the Son. The sacrifice of Jesus is what opens the door so that we can witness the completeness of God's glory to the ability that we are able to understand the peace and the grace and the love that comes from the fullness of God 
gives our limited minds the tools that we need to imagine the enormity of God in our lives. How can we shut that out in exchange for the things that are going around in our world? It's very important to realize that the Holy Spirit hovered over the water in the very beginning. And Jesus, God's Son, our Lord, was there too. In Genesis 1.26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our own image. Who is that our and us in that verse, in the very beginning of all creation? The Father? And then Son and Holy Spirit. The unity of God's presence purchasing our future as creatures in God's kingdom. The connection between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is made at the baptism of Jesus. God's voice comes down and the Holy Spirit is visible like a dove, and the Son is there at the baptism. Clearly, they are working in harmony, and they are working in harmony to save the people from themselves, to reconcile the people of God to the fullness and the glory of God. The unity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are played again on the mountain of transfiguration. God is truly from the beginning to the end. The first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit helps us to see that fullness and that completeness and that uh, total care of a God for God's people. But Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, no matter how full, no matter how grand, can only give us a very small glimpse of God's infinite glory. What that means for you and me is this. We are justified by faith in the fullness of God. And that means that your purpose in life is not of this world. Even though we try very hard to make our purpose of this world, your purpose and your role in God's kingdom was planned from the beginning of time. It's not an accident or a result of a random bunch of circumstances, a random place that you end up in life. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have orchestrated the role that you would take as one of his children. The role that you and I would play in the kingdom of God since before time began. Since before we were born. But more importantly, since before the creation of the world. God had you. God had me in mind. And he planned our purpose in life. According to Paul, the key to living in the light of God and feeling God's love is faith that what I just said is true, that we do have a purpose in God's plan. Trusting in Jesus gives us peace in the presence of the great fullness of God. We can stand before such a glorious God and hold our hearts out to Him only, only because Jesus made us clean by His loving and saving sacrifice at Calvary. And the Holy Spirit sustains that clean cleanliness. It's when we try to intervene and take control and take control of our own purpose that 
we lose sight of that plan that God has in mind for each one of us. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the completeness that we are justified by according to this passage from Paul. When we deny that, when we move out into the world and forget about the love of Jesus, that is when peace and joy leave our hearts and all hope seems lost. So as we zero in on the cross and the sacrifice that Jesus made the door that was opened there to see the fullness of God. Let's celebrate how the love of God shines so brightly through that complete, enormous presence of our great God in our lives, in our world. Listen to how Paul sums up Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace to stand before our God. And then, because he has poured out his love into our hearts by the power of the Holy Spirit, how can we not sing praise? How can we not Sing praise to God for the gift of Jesus' love, which opens the door to all of this, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Perhaps there's no better example of the fullness of God's blessing as expressed through the entirety of God's presence than in the passage from Acts. The believers then were one in the fullness of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Acts 2, verse 42, talks about what it means to experience God in all of His glory. That verse says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer, and everyone was filled with awe and had, and they had everything in common. <clears throat> Selling their possessions to the poor, they gave to anyone who had need. And the Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. This is the definition of fellowship in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, of course, yet to feel the fullness of its cleansing. But our hope rests upon the fullness of his blessing that we have witnessed today. Fellowship in the fullness of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let's zero in on the cross and the door that is opened by the sacrifice that Jesus made and then praise and give thanks to our God. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayer. We humbly come before you, giving thanks for the blessing of your love. Journey with us this day and this hour that we might be your children, your servants, that we might feel the wonder of the purpose that you have given to us to accomplish and that we might be justified by the faith that we are given to follow in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Let's join now and sing the hymn number 101, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. <coughs> Thank you.
Apostles' Creed that's printed in your bulletin, let us confess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We come now to the place where we prepare our hearts for the time that we will spend in prayer. So a couple things I want to call to your attention. We want to keep uh, Terry Vincent in our prayers. Also, uh, those that are uh, not able to get out the way they would like to. Alex Strandgard, Louise Green, uh, Jackie Williams, Barb Anderson, Eleanor Garrison, and Joyce King. Uh, yeah, we need to uh, keep those folks in our prayers that they like, recognize they are an important part of this people of God. We also want to keep Joe Roberts, Robert DeVries, Gary Lovestead, Vicki Blair, Julie Shutt, uh, Martha Green, Clint Dykoff, Dylan Preston, and Jackie Brown, Penny Peterson, and Kenneth White, and Dorothy Gift. Are there others? Cheryl? Family of Vic Nichols. Dick. Dick? Yes. Okay. Okay, others? Zoe for mental health. Zoe for mental health. Where, is there another one? Let's bow our hands in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we offer our hearts to you today and ask that you help us as we zero in on the sacrifice of Jesus, which opens the door to God, and the love that comes from the creation of the world and all of the things that flow from the heart and the hand and the voice of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. On this day, we ask that you would help the donations collected for the food pantries, that they would be an expression of God's love, that as we worship and participate in, in extra Lenten things, that it might be a way that helps us to recognize the importance of picking up our cross and following, uh, the importance of journeying with our Savior, and recognizing the road that he followed and the sacrifice that our Savior made. We ask, Lord, that in that context of zeroing in on the cross, you would uh, guide us in prayer for these in our congregation who have need. We ask that you'd be with Terry Vincent, just watch over him, that he might know that you are by his side with each step. We ask that you'd be with those that are not able to get out the way they would like to be with Joyce King, be with Eleanor Garrison and Barb Anderson and Jackie Williams and Louise Green and Alex Strangar and uh, Sue and Bob Crane. Just warm their hearts with the blessing of your love that even though they might not be able to get out quite the way they would like to, they would know that you walk by their side and you are in fellowship with them in the complete fullness of God. We ask, Lord, that you also be with uh, Joe Roberts and Nancy as they go through the long, difficult journey that Joe has had with his health problems. Just keep them faithful and help them to see the light of your spirit guiding their path. We ask that you be with Martha Green just care for her spirit as she continues to go through cancer treatments. Be with Robert DeVries and 
Gary Lovestead, Dylan Preston, and Clint Dykhoff just help each one of these children of God know the glory and the healing love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask also that you would be with Vicki Blair, Julie Shutt, and Jackie Brown. Just warm their hearts with the knowledge that Christ rules all, and in Christ all things are possible. We ask that you be with Penny Peterson and Kenneth White. Just uh, keep them uh, faithful so that they might endure the treatments that they are going through and still find peace and joy in each day authored by your hand, dear Lord. We ask that you be with Dorothy Gift just as she settles into a new place and gains strength and, and kind of uh, figures out what her new normal will be. We ask that you accompany her in that process. We ask that you be with the family of uh, Dick Nichols, who passed away earlier this week, and be with Zoe, that uh, there might be uh, uh, the assurance uh, uh, and the love of the Lord uh, present with that child of God. We give you thanks and praise. We ask that you be with us as we continue to journey through the season of Lent, as we continue to find ways to pick up our cross and follow, so that we might witness the door to the kingdom being opened by the love of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray now the prayer our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Let us prepare our hearts now to dedicate the offering that comes before us.
Jesus and embrace the sacrifice of our Savior. Pick up your cross and follow this day and forevermore. Amen.